But if I go ahead and, and start to drowse off, like you'd see I'm being classified as the right class with drowsy. The average time drowsy goes up in the top left corner, as well as the drowsiness monitor starts to uh, be updated. Hi, everyone. I'm Joe Wayne. I'm a solutions architect at RoboFlow. I operate within the field engineering team as a part of the sales organization. I'm happy to share with you my project. I have a few videos here. So here's a before video. So you can see there's a drowsy driver behind the wheel, and there's a lot of safety risks behind this. And if we continue forward, we can think about how do we track drowsy drivers with AI. With RoboFlow, we have this after on the right-hand side. So as you can see, we're detecting an awake versus a drowsy class. We also have an average time drowsy in the top left corner and an ongoing chart in the top right corner that we'll dive into a little bit more in a second. A quick overview. We want to detect and track driver drowsiness over time with RoboFlow. You might ask why. Ultimately, both in, in the personal and the commercial side of things in the U.S., there's millions of car crashes each year, tens of thousands of deaths, as well as hundreds of billions in damages. And hopefully there's some way that we can address that and bring that down over time significantly. You might ask how we're going to do this. We're going to utilize RoboFlow to create, tune, and deploy a computer vision model with workflows. We'll go into that in a second, as well as using some custom Python blocks to provide those on-screen insights that we saw earlier. So to start off, I'll talk about my model. We used an object detection model in this case. I originally built the foundational model using RoboFlow Universe. If you're not familiar, RoboFlow Universe is our open source computer vision data set. You know, there's 350 million plus images here. It's a great way to get your model started if you don't necessarily have the images you want. So to start off, I originally looked for drowsy person in the universe. And I started to go through all these different data sets. And I found that, for example, this data set in particular looked pretty good. And we can go and see here the 52 images that are included in this data set. These are already annotated. Um, so if I click on here, we can see that we have an image of a drowsy person. And there's a really quick way to actually get that in your data set. We can go here. If it already exists, your project, you can select the images that are on this page. You can actually go ahead and clone the images and you're able to clone them to your workspace, to your project. Uh, you're also able to fork the entire data set to a new project if you want to start from there also. So I did this for my first couple of versions. I played around with some various models, some various data sets in the universe. And ultimately I realized I needed to include more pictures of myself. So I went ahead and started to collect images of myself in order to make the model more accurate for myself in particular, but also making it a little bit more generalized for different looking people. As you can see here, we have a fairly well-performing model, very high map precision and recall. We can take a second to look at the confusion matrix here. Overall, fairly accurate with the 50% confidence threshold. We can also look at some of the false positives here, for example, as well as when we're mislabeling classes. So the grand truth here would be awake, but we're actually getting a drowsy. So you can see here, if we click on this image, the model predicts a drowsy, but in actuality, we're, we're defining this as awake. This is something that we could address either by going back into the original data sets and modifying those, or we can actually you know, make further adjustments with adding additional images to the data set to making it more thorough. At this point, I like to go into our workflow that I have generated for this particular model and project. Very high level, we're using the model. We're tracking the different detections in the model, adding some visualizations, and then ultimately creating some outputs. Taking it a step further, I'll go into a little bit more of some of the nuances here that you might not see in the typical workflow. At the very top, we have a RoboFlow dataset upload. If you're not familiar with this, this is how we do active learning with RoboFlow. In essence, the more you actually train and utilize inference, RoboFlow inference, we're able to send that data back into our data set in order to be utilized for additional versions. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. We're using the byte tracker to track our classes over time, creating those visualizations I talked about. And then this is some custom Python I wrote here. I can briefly show it. I don't want to spend too much time here though, but basically we're taking in the detections and our input image, and then we're ultimately outputting an image that has that, that percentage labeled in the top left corner, as well as providing that float value. I'll be able to provide this after, after this webinar, if you guys would like me to share that. We're then taking that image 
with that, that, that label in the top left corner, as well as that, that percentage. And then we're putting that into an additional custom Python block here. And ultimately we're outputting another image that actually includes the graph. So this is, this is graphing the percent drowsiness over time in the top right corner, I believe with a 30 second window. And then we're outputting that image. We also are creating a CSV in this particular case. So we're using the CSV formatter and then we're taking in the percent drowsy as well as the current state. And then we're saving that to a local file. So with all that being said, I'd like to actually run a local demo for everybody here. We'll do that first with a webcam and then secondarily with one of those pre-recorded videos I have. So whenever you're running on a webcam, usually the first couple of seconds to take some time to get up and going, but we should see a fairly solid frame rate after the first couple of seconds here. So you can see me again, I'm being classified as awake as hopefully I, I would be given a webinar. And if I go ahead and, and start to drowse off, you could see I'm being classified as the right class with drowsy. The average time drowsy goes up in the top left corner, as well as the drowsiness monitor starts to uh, be updated. And you can see that the drowsiness monitor in the top right corner also shifts, I believe on a 30 second rolling window. That looks hopefully pretty good. We'll go ahead and make a quick modification to the code here. And we'll swap from using a webcam to actually using one of those pre-recorded videos I have of a driver in a car. And the model with all the data sets we've provided, you know, is able to handle different environments, different people. You know, I don't think I'd look necessarily the same as the person in this video we're about to see, but the model still performs very well. And once this is done running, I'll also show you that CSV that we saved. So in the local file sync, we're actually saving it to this particular folder here, and we're appending within the same inference run. So within the same webcam stream or the same video being run, that should be within the same CSV. Let me go ahead and open this up. So this is the CSV folder I saved it in. And ultimately you can see, I believe this will be for my, what well, my webcam run. So we have both the percent drowsy as well as the current state and the timestamp. So if we go down a little bit, you'll see that my drowsiness percentage goes up as I am a drowsy class, something we can play around with relatively high level at this point. And then ultimately the other video we have here. So this was the pre-recorded video going between drowsy and awake, something that I think is pretty cool. Ultimately. I believe that's, that's most of what I'm looking to get done at, at a very high level of this demo. Of course, I encourage questions in the chat, if anything about the particular model or the workflow or some of the motivation behind it. That being said, let me pull this slide back up. I'd like to thank you for your time and I'd love it if you guys could join us for our additional webinars at ribaflow.com slash webinar.